Imani, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another video. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for coming to watch this one. So today I wanted to do a let's talk video, kind of like my girl talk, but more so, I don't want to say a broader audience because my girl talks are for everybody, but just, just not a girl talk. Um... I'm so excited that I actually get to record this video. I've been waiting for almost a year to record this. So I'm actually like, I have so much gratitude in my heart and I'm just thankful that I'm able to record this video now. So I I know normally on my girl talks and my let's, you know, those type of videos, I'm not in my filming room, but I am moving, so my house is kind of in shambles right now, and this is the only place that actually looks decent <laughs> right now. So, so I actually wanted to give you all like a life update and what's been going on with me for the past like 10 months since I've graduated college, um, but I wanted to make sure that I could give the most transparent video and honest video as possible so i wanted to wait until the perfect time and the perfect time is now um i guess i could just start with the good stuff so i actually got a job in new york city and that's originally where i'm from so i'm basically going back home but i'm so excited um i actually the details of like where I'll be going is on my Instagram. So follow me on Instagram at Imani VTV if you haven't already and you can see actually exactly where I'm going. And I'm just extremely excited and my heart is full because these past 10 months have been hectic. Um, I really got... I don't want to say I got the worst of post-grad life because I'm pretty sure that there's more struggle stories that are, you know, hot, that were worse than mine. But post-grad life really tried to take me out. Long story short, September of last year, I got let go from my job because I could no longer really be there as much as they wanted me to because it was my last semester of college and I was taking six classes and I was not letting nothing or no one get in the way of that um, and I just couldn't fulfill the hour requirements and they just let me go and it was a it was a troubling time because for me personally because I was stuck between do I go out and get another job and be bombarded with the hour requirements and the training and all that or do I stay unemployed and finish school and you know thank you know I'm very thankful you know I had a I have a supportive fiance and he was just like just finish school I got you and you know the help of my parents as well so I just finished and, you know, I, throughout college, I had a job. I was just one of those people that, you know, kind of wanted a certain lifestyle. And, you know, my mom, my parents, my mom mainly was putting me through school. And, you know, she couldn't, like, she just could take care of school, which I was perfectly fine with. But because of that, I was like, I need to have a job. So I was always someone that had a job. So at this time, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. But because I was someone that always had a job, I was like, man, when I get out, I'm going to have a job. Like, I ain't even worried. I'm going to be sending out these apps. And on my fifth app, they somebody going to call me. No, that was not the case. And I just saw how real it, it, it got. Um, so long story, if you know, if you haven't been on my channel, um, and you don't know much about me, I went to Georgia State University and I got my BA in um, journalism with a minor in political science. And so my career goal was to either be, to either work at a public relations firm be or be a publicist or be a broadcast journalist. I learned very quickly that I did not have the tools to necessarily become a broadcast journalist. Um, l later in my, I guess you could say college career, I realized I wanted to be a broadcast journalist and it was kind of too late for me after talking to numerous people in the industry. I got a lot of mixed 
emotions um well sorry not emotions i got mixed responses a lot of people were like oh now nah, you're good we could fix your reel you don't need to go to grad school then i'm hearing you need to go to grad school because you don't have internships and you can't get internships a lot of times when you've already graduated college so i kind of just was like you know what just because you love something doesn't necessarily mean that that's the route that you're supposed to take and i also feel like with my youtube channel which i love to do that's kind of my way of having a tv show that's my way of kind of being the journalist that i want to be and i'm doing it on my terms so i kind of just was like you know what put the, that on hold for a little bit and you know try to go after what you really always wanted to do which was PR. I love PR. A um, little bit of background about me. I went to high school. Um, I went to the high school of fashion industries and I got a certificate in marketing and I feel like PR and marketing they're not the same but they are definitely parallel and they definitely you know they meet at some point. They definitely do. So I was like, let me do PR, let me, you know, try to find that route and things like that. So I took the PR route and it actually was working out for me. I got a lot of opportunities to do great things in the entertainment industry. But here's the problem. I'm an adult at this point and I have bills. And a lot of the things that I was doing were not paid. And that's where you have to put up that fight for what you really want because you know at the same time you're gonna when you're going after your dreams you may have bill collectors calling you every single day about eight times you may have something get cut off you may be really past due on things and that was my life for a very long time and I but I was so determined I was so determined to not fall into that category of every not every but majority of college grads that just get a job and they don't they don't go after what they really want and I just like I had really refused to be a part of that statistic because I'm like yo you busted your ass for four years to come out of college and not do what you busted your ass for now don't get me wrong there are some people that go to college and they get out and they start, you know, they do things in their field and they're like, this is not me. This is not for me. This is not, I just did this so I had a, had a check coming. Like there's situations like that. And if that's, you know, your situation or someone you know, that's different. It's like you tried it, but it just didn't work out. But I didn't want to give up without giving it a shot, you know, and I had to really like fight and I'm thankful for the support that I had financially from my circle because if I didn't I probably would have had to fall into that that statistic and and that field of things because like I said Bill's calling and they don't care if you're like yeah I'm at an internship right now and it's non-paid so can I can we discuss this about six months? They don't want to hear that. They're like, can you pay today or not? And if not, we gonna put you in collection. Like that's literally how it is. And it's unfortunate, but that's how it is. So I got great opportunities in the industry. I was an intern at a wonderful PR firm. I, you know, and they really like grooms me and really took me under their wing when I really had no experience at all. Because once again, like I said earlier, I was in college and I was just working and didn't think like, hey, you need more internships under your belt. I thought that the one I did have already was good enough, but no, it's best if you have multiple. So they took me under their wing and I really learned a lot. And you know, they also trusted me a lot. They let me interview celebrities when they had events, which was cool because you know sometimes like when you're an intern they just like you do this but they let me be myself and think outside the box and do things that I you know wanted to do so you know and this is one thing about the industry that I've learned is that sometimes like you will get left behind and not you know I really have no issues I'm not hurt but I kind of got left behind my internship just stopped abruptly like I just call stopped everything and I'm like 
what did I do wrong? Like, I'm sitting here working really hard. Like, I'm doing everything that, you know, you ask. Like, I'm, you know, what could I have done better? You know, I start to question myself and my abilities. But it probably had nothing to do with me. But the call stopped. They stopped. So I got another internship. And it was also in the entertainment industry. And I learned more. I learned a lot more than I did at my last internship. And it was great. But once again, it was unpaid. So here I am. And this is where the depression started to kick in. Because it's like, yo, you're literally working for nothing. And, you know, you have to not give up on your dreams. So at this point, I'm like, yo, when is this going to stop? And this is when, you know, looking back at it, this was one of my problems and that contributed to my depression. I was always thinking about the next thing instead of thinking about what was in front of me. So while I'm sitting here at this internship, I'm like, I'm not even getting paid, this is ridiculous, but I'm gonna get paid in a few months though because I'm gonna get my big girl job. Like this is how I'm thinking instead of saying, this is an internship that God blessed you with and you need to appreciate it and understand and take in everything that you're learning. And that was my problem was that I never lived in the present. It took me a while to live in the present. Like a month ago, I started living in the present. But I was always focused on the next thing like, yo, you're going to get a job. You're going to get a job. Like I kept telling myself this, you're going to get a job. You ain't going to have to do this anymore. When in all reality, I should have just sat there and appreciated the opportunities that I was blessed with. So that internship was about three months. And after that, I really had nothing. I literally was working a part time job in retail. And that was it. I literally had nothing. And I had got to the point where I was like, okay, Imani, maybe you're not supposed to be in Atlanta. Like this is what I'm thinking to myself. Like, Maybe this is not what you're supposed to be doing. Maybe you're just not supposed to be living here anymore. So I really had to have that talk with myself like, this is it. You went to school and you need to branch out. So I was just talking to my mom casually. She was like, I think you should just apply for a job in New York and see what happens. And I did. And I actually, you know, maybe... A week after I applied, I, you know, spoke to an HR recruiter and they brought me in for an interview. And I did the interview and I was like, if I don't get this job, I'll be surprised because it went really well. Like, I'm, this is what I'm telling people. And that same week, I had applied to maybe, I applied to, to two internships dur um, kind of during this time frame, right? So one of my internships that I applied to was like, hey, can you come in for an interview? And I'm like, unfortunately, no, I'm out of town. And they were like, well, you know, you applied a while back. So let's just I'll accommodate you for a Skype interview. So I did the Skype interview. And in that same day, another internship had reached out to me. And I'm like, OK, well, you know, gosh, just he's kind of this is the season of blessing. So I'm going to do this other interview. So I did like the HR screening process for that. And I'm like, all right, well, we'll get back to you, blah, blah. Now, here's where it gets. This is why I didn't want to be it's just to, to I cannot say that word. Like I probably butchered it the entire video. This is why I didn't want to become a stat. There we go, stat, okay? So I, you know, out of, I don't wanna say desperation, but out of just trying to be an adult, I had applied for a federal job in April. And around this time, this was July, when I was getting these interviews for the job I applied for in New York and the internship. And I literally was supposed to start in the federal job in two weeks. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know if I should, you know, not take the job, blah, blah, blah. So I was, you know, talking to people and they're like, I think you should take it and you can always quit, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to leave a federal job on a bad note. Cause you know, honestly it was a really good job and I 
if I left it on a bad note, like I don't think that would have been good at all because honestly, I could do it like way down the line when I'm like retired from my career and I'm like I just want some money in my pocket it you know it like it would always be there and I just didn't want to leave it on a bad note so after thinking about it I was like well you know what I'll just put I'll delay my class that I was going to um enter so that's what I ended up doing so because I did that I didn't start when I was supposed to start and right before I was supposed to start one of the internships called me and they're like yeah we want to bring you in da, 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 da. and i'm like okay cool so not and this is like it's just so many lessons in this post-grad thing that like i could probably talk to you guys for an hour but i'm really sure i don't want to make this video too long so i still didn't hear back from my my new york interview um, they had emailed me and were like, yeah, we're going to be on vacation. So we're pausing this process. I'm like, dang. So I'm like, I got to take this internship. So the internship was cool. It was paid. Like, it really wasn't paid, but it was something. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm making more than what I've made in the past, like, seven months. If, if we're full transparent moment, you know, actually... Full, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. The monthly stipend was $500 a month. So I'm saying to myself, that's nothing, but it's more than what I've been had. So we're going to just, you know, go with it. So I start my first week. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. So the following week, I actually had to do a project for the position that I actually am about to start um, next week. Well, and well, depending on when you watch this, I'm going to start too soon. I'm going to start soon. So I had to do a project and I literally like locked in. Like I didn't go nowhere the entire weekend. I literally just locked in. I'm like, I need to do this project. And, you know, I completed it. They enjoyed it. And I got another interview. So I had to fly from Atlanta to New York to this interview. And I told my internship what was going on and they're kind of, in my opinion, being haters, and they're just like, well, you did sign a four month contract with us, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, but I had this interview. I had started this process before they even interviewed me. And I'm like, you know, it is, I'm at an internship and this is a career job. Like, why are y'all acting like this? In my head, I'm like, this is crazy. So I go in for my final interview um, and it went, the interview went well. So this was like the last week of August, okay? So I'm like, I got this job, I'm not even worried. And I kind of, sorry, I kind of was, I don't wanna say laxed because I did feel like I did really well at my internship, but I definitely was like, I got this job, I'm doing a bare minimum at my internship. And this is where patience and being thankful for what you have and living in the moment came. So this was like the first week, the last, sorry, not first, last week of August, first week of September. I am filming this on sep, not September, whoa, October 22nd, 2019, okay? I didn't hear back from the position I applied to in New York that I got the job till October 11th, 2019. So a whole month and a half had passed. And during this time, I can't tell you my anxiety was through the roof. I don't even know what's going on. Like, I feel like I got the job, maybe I didn't. It, my anxiety was through the roof. And on top of that, I felt like at my internship, I was being overworked and underpaid, for sure. I definitely felt that way. Um, I put in more time than, you know, what I was being compensated for. And that pissed me off. And I was just getting stressed, breaking out, um, kind of still breaking out if, if we're being fully transparent here. And up until like the third week of them not getting back to me yet, I, at that time, I felt my my perspective on life shift 
And I was like, Imani, you need to be thankful for what you have. You know, you were begging for something like this two months ago. If like if you if you're really real with yourself and you're not being thankful for what God has given you so far. And once I had that conversation with myself, I felt like my stress level and my anxiety went down for sure. And I feel like one of the biggest issues with postgrad depression and it, it's easier said than done. I literally just went through it, y'all. So what I what I'm telling y'all. It's not, you know, just to say y'all should do this because I get it, it's hard. But I feel like the biggest issue is that you're always focused on what's next and not what's in front of you. And I feel like if we focused on the present instead of worrying about when am I going to get my full salary job? When am I going to make six figures? When am I going to be able to do this, this and that for myself? Now, I get it. We have goals. We have aspirations. But you can't let that take over your life and you don't live in the present you know i had to like really check myself like yo you were dead ass like begging for an internship like this four months ago you were dead ass and you gonna you know be ungrateful and complain you cannot do that and i feel like that is one of the huge issues with post-grad depression because the biggest thing is that when you graduated high school, it was you go to college or, you know, you just start in the work field like you had one or those two options. Right. Majority of people, they just go to college because society has conditioned us that if you go to college, you're going to get a job in your field. I'm here to tell you today that that is true, but it's not right out. It's not right out you gonna have to really fight the good fight if if that's what you really if that's what you really want it's not going to come to you instant gratification no it's not so we're sitting here you know we're conditioned think we go to school we'll we'll be fine we'll, when we get out so then you graduate and then you are sitting here like what is next for me and then you're like, you know what? I don't have a job yet, but let me talk to some people in the industry that I'm in. And some of them are like, you need to do your resume over or you need to do this or better yet, you don't have the qualifications. And then you're fighting with that. Like, yo, do I listen to these people or do I just continue to go after what I feel like I was per what? I was put on earth to do what my purpose is right so you're fighting all these things and you just start to in my for me i just became lost like i spent a lot of days in bed and i wanted to get up and the days i did get up i just wanted to cry and i cried and i cried like why is it taking me so long to get a job what is wrong with me what did i do wrong did it you know, I wish I could do college over, like just going over and over and just kind of beating myself up because I wasn't where I expected to be. And I feel like you have to really just live in the moment. Like prior to my internship, I wasn't working a full time, like nine to five. A lot of my, inter the two internships I did have, it was, hey, you want to work today? Okay, cool. I I'll tell you when to come like that's how it was so once I started working full time I'm like yo I missed when I could just wake up when I felt like it like but those are things that you when you're in that moment you're like I hate this why is this me why 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 like you just you're self-pitying and you're just oh what was me and you cannot be like that you have to find you know the good and the bad i mean honestly during my time like kind of being like really unemployed i feel like i was really able to boost my youtube channel and put out some great content that you all enjoy and that brought me joy and that's one of the things that kept me pushing besides you know applying for jobs every day i've probably applied to over 100 jobs um and that got tiring because in my field especially you have to write cover letters for each job you apply for. So I'm sitting here writing cover letters for each job I apply for. 
And I'm just like, y'all better take me. Something. Y'all better take me. Because I, I can't do this no more. And I still wouldn't hear anything. A lot of the times it, I was underqualified, didn't have the experience. And I'm just like, here we go. I'm entry level. Why do you need three, five years experience in my field if it's an entry level position? Come on now. You know, these are the frustrations that I had. So I say all this to say, like, really just live in the moment where you're supposed to be right now is where you're supposed to be and when you get to your point you're gonna be happy i mean like full transparent moment like i'm just happy that now i can make weekly trips to trader joe's because you know i'll have the means to do it like i and i know to some people it's like wow i mean that that's food but that's how real it got for me like you know where you decide you know what you eat in a day and things like that the struggle was real but you know to be at this point I'm so thankful and grateful and I think honestly if I didn't go through this struggle I don't think I would be as appreciative for what I have you know now you know like going through that struggle made me appreciate things more like to be honest prior to this this 10 month unemployment gap that I had I never really appreciated a job because I was someone that get like I could quit a job and get another one like that like that that was me like it didn't take me long to get a job and to be at a you know large you know span of being unemployed I'm like yo this job right here I'm gonna hold on to it like I'm you know I just view things differently and I think if I didn't go through that it wouldn't be that way for me so you know I will say please check on your friends or people you know that graduated college because that transition for them is really hard especially with social media th these days I mean I swear every time I turned around on social media someone I graduated with or someone I knew literally got a job in their field and one thing I am thankful for, like one thing I'm thankful for is that I was never like a hater. Like I literally, if I saw somebody get a job in my field, you know, I'm sorry. If I saw somebody that I went to school and get a job in their field, which is my field, I literally would congratulate them. Like when I would see it, I would feel it in my heart like I got the job. And I'm thankful that I was like that because if I wasn't, Lord knows, I'd probably still be unemployed. Like I would literally see that and I'm like, Lord, I know you got something for me. I know my time is coming. It may not be today, but I know you got something for me. And, you know, looking back at all the no's I got, you know, I'm like, honestly, what I have today is, you know, not, I'm, you know, I don't want to say way better because I, I don't know, but what I have today, I would have never imagined that I would have. I will say that. And I just feel like, appreciate this time. Like, you know, you hear these rap, you know, these rappers in their, in their songs and they, you know, they talk about the days they used to struggle. And it's like, you know, you can kind of relate to them. Like, yo, like, I, I feel that. I feel that. Like, don't look at your struggle as, you know, your demise look at it as an opportunity to grow because when you look at it as an opportunity to grow you can bless others with your time. sorry y'all my camera coming off but like i was saying like you can't let your struggle be your demise you can use your struggle to be a testimony help somebody talk to somebody from their struggles and let them know like i'm a prime example that this is not over for you and i you know this is why i was so excited to be like yay i could finally record this video like to let you know that if you graduate and you don't have a job right away like it's okay it may take you a long time it may take you a year it could take you 10 months it could take you six months but just because you know someone you graduated with got a job right away doesn't mean that you can't be just as great it doesn't you know one thing I learned during this process is that and it's hard but you can't let money and you know a career define you 
Because that's where your depression comes in. Your depression comes in because you're like, I went to school for four years and here I am waiting on a career and it's not even happening for me. Like, this is like, that is what it is. And you can't let something like that define you because that's not who you are. You know, you appreciate this downtime. Who knows? You could, during your downtime, you could, you could be you know, start your own business and never have to work for somebody. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't, you know, just be down and upset about your circumstances. Improve on it. Push forward because it's not over for you. And I know that's easier said than done. Trust me. Like, I've had so many people say to me, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I'm like, girl, you don't understand these people is calling me asking me when I'm gonna pay this like you know I'm not trying to be funny but you know you're hearing that and you're like you don't understand where I'm coming from but they do they do and you know one of the things I also learned is like sometimes you gotta step out your comfort zone I was ready to settle in Atlanta buy my house and look I'm going back to my hometown so don't one thing I say like don't be afraid to start somewhere new don't be afraid to go back, you know, go back to your hometown to get your job. Like whatever the case is, like, don't be afraid to change things up a bit. Of course, I would have loved to stay in Atlanta. Come on now, you know, but things happen and, you know, I'm going back and I'm really excited and I'm thankful and, you know, I'm glad that I was able to share with you my experience and, you know, I hope I really hope I help somebody and I'm always here mess you know email me whatever like feel free like I'm here and thank you so much for watching I love y'all and share this with anyone who's going through it you know I, I really hope I this video helps someone so I will talk to y'all soon and I will see y'all in my next video bye <laughs>